to see him in the house of the Lord once again. Touch their hearts and minds and their spirit and what avails them at the time. Yes. Praise God. We want to remember Sister Roger. Hallelujah. It's going out of town. She's asking that God will keep her hand, or his hands upon her. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> During the time of travel, we want to remember the Gibbs family tonight. Direction and healing, as well as well, Sister Hodge is here tonight. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sickness that she has uh, acquired this week. Uh, Angel Beach is asking that, or the family of Angel Beach is asking that we keep her in mind uh, through the surgery. Said <clears throat> Sherry Cooter, uh, sick. She's here tonight. Amen. Praise yeah. God. She's going through these things. Hallelujah. Uh, Jelena Collins is asking for prayer. Hallelujah. Jim and Alice Greenway uh, is asking uh, for prayer during their sickness of flu. Yeah. Harrison Jackson not feeling well. Of course, Mary, I'm feeling too well. We made it tonight. Amen. Praise God. We come in faith, believing God can do anything He desires. Amen. Praise God. Any believers in the house tonight? Special unspoken, signified by the raising of hands. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord right now and ask Him to have His way. Lord, we thank you, God, for tonight. We thank you for your presence. We ask God that you continue to move in our midst. Lord, you said we're two or three of God in your name, you there shall be. Hallelujah. So we're asking God as faithful people, Lord, call my precious Lord. Lord, that you would move and speak, God, in such a way, Lord, we'll never forget it. Touch every perfect place, Lord, that's been given to you, Lord. We're asking God, both spoken and unspoken alike, Lord Jesus, that you would minister to the very need right now. We're giving it all because we believe, we trust, we call under the auspices of the Holy Ghost tonight, Jesus. We're going to give you the praise and glory for our tonight because we know you have all things in your hands. If you believe that with all your heart, one more time, would you just give God praise? Praise the Lord. So thankful, so thankful for his food. Amen. Nobody can do you like Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Nobody in the house probably can testify to that. They can nobody do you like the Lord. Praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Ask Brother Beasley if you bless this tonight, Lord Jesus, thank you for having us gathered today, Lord Jesus. Thank you for having us already. Thank you for Jesus. And we ask that all your name. Amen. 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 Amen.
lovely wife to give a testimony tonight. She requested that she did not sing. Her voice is going out. But I would love her to testify tonight. Amen. Whatever's on her heart in Jesus' name. great church. Amen. I, it is the first time meeting him, but I do believe um, we are forming a friendship. Amen. And I appreciate him. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight, Amen. opening your pulpit to me. And um, I, I don't know about you, but I I come to see God do a work. begin to talk to me and I feel like God's placed a word in my heart for Savannah the right. first Pentecostal church of Savannah anybody believe that right now I, I'm an evangelist and we tend to we tend to get cautious with an evangelist first time you don't know him but we don't have three weeks to do this we have tonight. This is all we got. And I, I've come to kick the devil right between the eyes tonight. Psalms 30, if you got your Bible, Psalms chapter number 30. honor to Pastor Webster and all the POB tonight. Thank you for coming. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Psalms chapter 30, verse number 8, the Bible says, I cried unto thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. Verse number 9, what profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? And he asked the question right here, shall the dust praise thee? Shall it, does everybody say it, yes. declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me, Lord. Be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. And to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee. And not be silent. O Lord, my God. I will give thanks unto thee. Yes. Not just till next Sunday. Come on. Oh God. Oh, yeah. Not just till next month. Not to come on. I will give thanks unto thee forever. Yeah. No questions yeah. asked. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. 30, he's making a statement. What profit is there in my blood in verse number nine? When I go down to the pit, shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare? Thy truth. Yes. He's talking about dying here. Right. He said, I'm in, I'm in such a hard time. Oh, God, you've got to hear my cry. What profit is there in my blood when I go down into the pit? What profit is there in my blood when they finally put me in the grave? Is the dust going to praise thee? Oh, is the dust going to declare thy truth? Come on. And he answered the question in Psalms 118. Put it up on the screen, please, if you don't mind. 118, verse number 17. David make it, made a declaration. Psalms 118, verse number 17. He answered his own question. I shall not die. Huh? Amen. I shall not die. I shall not die. But live and declare. Come on, what, what was he talking about in 30? Shall the dust shall the dust praise thee? Shall the dust declare thy truth? No, no, no. Because I'm not gonna die. I'm gonna live and I'm gonna live and stand and declare every work of God. I'm gonna live and declare for somebody. I'm gonna stand and live and declare every work that God has ever done for me. I'm gonna stand right here with flat feet and my shoulders squared and declare everything that God's done right in the face of hell, right in the face of doubt, right in the face of fear. I'm gonna stand and declare. Oh, I wish somebody right now. Yeah. <laughs> 
preach for just a little while. Oh, yeah. But I want to preach a message that I feel God laid on my heart as soon as I walked in the store. And I want to title it, I'm not dead yet. Come on. I'm Come on. not dead. Hallelujah. Anybody who heard what the to preach right now? If you are, I want you to leave it out of your hand. It's a new choice. As a church right now, I'm praying. Holy Ghost in this house. Come on, somebody, would you lift your voice and pray? Come on, somebody, lift your voice. Can I get any young people right now that would really lift their voice and pray? Come on, pray like this house is on fire. God, we need your help right now. God, we need your glory to be in this house. God, open every ear. God, let your anointing come down and destroy every yoke of bondage. dead yet. Cross the aisle and high five about four or five people that are sitting next to you and tell them I'm not dead yet. Fear of being buried alive peaked during 
during the epidemics uh, of the 18th and 19th centuries, but accounts uh, of being buried alive, the accounts that recorded uh, peaked in those centuries up to 1,000 that was recorded just between the 18th and 19th century. And on reopening his tomb, the philosopher John Dunn Scottis uh, was reported found outside, everybody say outside, outside of his coffin with his hands uh, torn and bloody after attempting to escape. Although it is possible and merely just a myth, uh, the fears of being buried alive will rise even higher after this incident was put in the newspaper. The general fear of premature burial led to the inventions of many, many safety devices, uh, most consisted of some type of communication to the outside world, such as a cord attached to a bell. This making sense to anybody? Uh, such as a cord that was attached to a bell. Uh, that way a person could pull uh, the cord that's inside the coffin uh, and ring the bell that they would place uh, on a stick above the ground uh, where the saying came about, saved by the bell. Uh, even where someone would sit all night with a branch uh, in a graveyard. Also where the saying came about, the graveyard shift. Uh, where they would sit all night uh, waiting to see if this bell would ring. Uh, he meant some, some designs uh, included ladders, escape hatches, uh, and even feeding tubes, uh, but many forgot uh, about the method of providing air. And so the, Dr. Adolf Gutsmith was buried alive over 12 times just to present the kind of safety coffin that he had designed himself. It was a personal coffin that he had created. In 1822, he stayed underground for over 12 hours. He ate a meal of soup, bratwurst, and sauerkraut, and even a dessert that was delivered to him through his coffin's feeding tube. He met in 2014, this is recent news now, in Thessaloniki, Greece, it was recent news that the police reported a 45-year-old woman was buried alive by hyperventilating after being declared dead by a private hospital. She was discovered shortly after being buried by children, again, playing near the cemetery, heard screamings from within inside the earth. Do I got anybody's attention right now? I, I hope you're going to stick with me. I'm going somewhere in the Holy Ghost. Uh, and so all of this happening in, in, in around, and around, and another case is also recorded in 1884. It was recorded that a young lady by the name of Anna Hawkwell was dressing for her brother's wedding and sat down in the kitchen. Uh, amen. For a few minutes to rest. And later they found her with her head against the wall apparently lifeless. First they arrived and the doctor assumed she was dead and they could not revive her. However, this assumption did not sit right with Anna's sisters and her friends because they said, we still see a pinkish tint in her ears, indicating that blood's still flowing in her body. And so after they had made arrangements and buried her, Anna's sisters and friends came to her parents' house and they began to tell her parents what they observed in the hospital. They said, Anna is not dead, and we buried her. They said, what makes you say that? There was still blood rolling in her ears. There was still blood flowing in her body. And so, of course, this propelled their parents to dig her back up. And yes, you guessed it, they found worst case scenario. They found Anna's body that was laying upside down inside the coffin. Her fingers had been chewed down to the bone and all of her hair had been ripped out by the handfuls. What a terror for the branch it was to all of these people realizing that their family members had been buried too soon. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I feel my health right now. In England, in the 1500s, it's recorded that, in the, that the city ran out of places to bury people when the ep epidemics peaked at their highest peak. And so they would take these coffins and they would, they would, have normal, they would perform normal funerals. And then they would bury them, and later, months later, they would dig these bodies back up just to reuse their coffins. They couldn't make as many coffins as there was people dying. And so they would, they would dig these coffins back up, and they would take these bodies and these bones to a bone house, and they would store them. And they found a, a terror when they began to do this. That every 10 out of 20 coffins that they dug back up, they found scratch marks on the inside, blood stains on the inside and hair, hair, balls of hair on the inside, indicating that they were burying over half 
of everyone alive still. Can I just place the spiritual conditions on this house tonight? And what I feel the Holy Ghost has impressed me to preach tonight. Amen. To the first Pentecostal of Savannah. That in the context of a security covenant, I realize that there are adversities trying to shut the church out. I realize that hell is trying to shut young people off. I realize that in 2020, hell is fighting harder than hell has ever fought. But can I preach what I feel like the Holy Ghost told me to come and preach tonight? I also realize that there's a God in this house that's still breathing life. Cross you off. Everybody, come on, somebody. Come on. Everybody around you say you're never gonna make it. Come on, so let me just preach a word to this church right now. I don't care what the lies of the devil's been against this church. I come to cancel every lie. Peace. 
pronounced in bed. Family pronounced in bed. Come on. He said, hours later, he wakes up with a bitch. He said, it's so dark, he didn't know where it was. He said, all he felt was somebody was telling him. And he said, it finally clicked. They're on their way to put me in the ground. They literally had him in a coffin, walking him to where they're going to put him in the ground. And he said, really, he clicked, and he realized, I got to do something to get out of here. He said, or else they're going to put me in the ground. And he said, I just started banging the side of that coffin. He said, I started kicking. God, have mercy. You want to know what some of you need? Some of you need a good old-fashioned Holy Ghost field service. So you just start kicking it. Come on, it's been far too long since some of you got lost in the Holy Ghost. It's been far too long. You want to know? You want to know why everybody's telling me you're dead? When's the last time you got lost in the Holy Ghost? Churches. I preached in multicultural churches. 
I'm just going to tell you that conversation's wrong. Amen. Because I want to tell you why. My praise is not dictated by what kind of culture I am. Come on. Yeah. I knew I'd lose some of you right there. But my praise is not dictated by what kind of race I was born into. You want to know why? Somebody 
anybody know there's life on the inside of me? You're ready to let all, all of heaven and hell go. I haven't given up. I'm still here. I want you to start making your way up to the front right now. Come on. Y'all ain't got to see They can take it. Come on. If you're serious about this, if you're not a part of Savannah, I want you to come. Come on. Come on. Where you at? Come on. Where you at? Yeah, We're fixing to have church. We're fixing to let hell know. Yeah. Yeah. I want Savannah Church. Come on. Come on, Savannah Church. Where y'all at? Come on. Come on. Where y'all at? Come on. Let's crowd into this middle right here. Come on. Fill this middle up right here. Let's get together like a church. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, ladies. I'm going to tell you something right now. 2020 is a year of harvest for this church. Yeah. 2020 is a year of breakthrough for this church. 2020. Come on, can I just be myself and be an evangelist here right now? I'm telling you right now what I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, and I'm about to speak a holy utterance over this building. Uh, it's time to arise. Uh, it's time to arise. Uh, it's time to get up. Uh, it's time to let. This man 100% and you're ready to go and you're ready to declare it against all hell no more come on we're drawing a line in the sand yes. hell you're not crossing it anymore you're not taking any more young people out of this church no. come on I gotta obey the Holy Ghost yeah. right now but this church has suffered all the loss it's gonna suffer yeah. you hear this preacher brother Melcher came to tell you you suffered all the loss When you feel it, I don't believe in counting three, all that stuff, and we go and shout. When you feel it, and you feel the release, come on. I want every hand lifted, and we're fixing to lift our voice. If you need healing, if you need miracle, if you need sign, if you, whatever you need, break it. It needs to be matched with a voice. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, amen. And, and, and if you give that much, if you want it that much, then you just give that much. But your voice is going to signify to God. When I lay this mic down, your voice is going to signify to God how bad you want it. Yes. Huh? Your voice is going to signify to God how bad you want revival. How big of a revival you're wanting. Uh, come on, somebody. I'm fixing to lay this right now. Every hand lifted in this house right now. P.O.B., I need your help right now. P.O.B., I need your help right now. When you feel it, go. Somebody go.
exactly what we needed to hear tonight. Praise God. Again, thank you, Brother Webster, for coming and bringing all your folks with you tonight. God bless all of you for being here, making this such a great service tonight. Well, praise God. I feel good in my soul right now. Pray if you want to keep praying, that's fine. Fellowship, God bless you. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Savannah, folks, please make sure you sign the prayer chain, and uh, we'll see you hopefully Tuesday, Thursday, Friday nights. Let's be faithful. Wednesday night, Bible study.